if you are new to videography and you have absolutely no idea what all those numbers in your camera's menu mean, then this video is for you. 10-bit 422 refers to how much color data your camera captures or how much color fidelity it captures. 10-bit refers to color depth. Every single pixel on your camera sensor has three different color channels, red, green, and blue. Shooting in 10-bit will give you 1024 possible colors for each of those channels. In total, this will give you roughly over a billion possible colors for each individual pixel. 8-bit in comparison will only give you 265 shades of red, green, and blue, which will come out to 16 million possible colors. That means that 10-bit will give you 64 times the amount of possible colors as 8-bit. 244 refers to something we call chroma subsampling. Chroma subsampling simply means that we are not capturing color data for every single pixel of our image. This is done to cut down on file size. So instead of capturing color data for every single pixel, we just capture color data for some pixels and then copy the color data to the adjacent pixels. To define the amount of chroma subsampling, we are looking at a sample area that is four pixels wide and two pixels tall. The first number indicates that we are capturing Luma data for all four pixels in both of our rows. As far as I know, this is the case for all modern cameras. This is because our eyes are much more sensitive to changes in Luma or brightness values. And not capturing Luma data for any of those pixels would result in a drastic decrease in image quality. The second and third number indicate the amount of chroma samples in the first and second row, or how much color data we're capturing. If we're shooting 4 to 2, for example, so this means that we're capturing two colored pixels for the top row and two colored pixels for the bottom row. Now this may come as a surprise for some people, but that is indeed enough color data to give us a properly colored image. The color data from the colored pixels simply gets copied to the adjacent pixels. There is actually a similar technique in printing called halftoning, where the printed dots that make up an image are printed in different sizes and with different spacing to cut down on resources while still giving the perception of smooth color. So if we're looking at other popular settings like 444 for example, that means that we are again capturing Luma data for all four pixels in both of our rows. But now we are also capturing four colored pixels for both of our rows. That means that with 444 there is actually no chroma subsampling as we are capturing the full chroma data. Now your standard 16x9 4K image has just over 8 million pixels total. And if we're shooting in 444 that means that we're capturing Luma and Chroma data for every single one of those pixels. So you can imagine that this will result in very, very large files. Now, if we instead were to shoot in 420, for example, this would mean that we would be capturing two colored pixels for the top row and zero colored pixels for the bottom row, which would result in 50% less color data than 422 or only 25% of the full color data, which is 444. Now, while this may sound like 420 is going going to look incredibly bad, you have to factor in that we still have different Luma values for each individual pixel. So even though we are copying the color data to the adjacent pixels, we are not going to end up with four pixels that are exactly the same shade of green, for example. But if we don't even need to capture chroma data for each individual pixel to get a properly colored image, is shooting something like 10-bit 422 actually worth it? There are two different kind of worlds we need to keep in mind here editing and playback. If you're watching a video, you might be viewing it on a platform or a monitor that is only able to playback 8-bit. This means your 10-bit video is going to get compressed anyways, so it would not really make a big difference. However, if we're talking about the world of editing and especially things like color grading and green screening, it's a whole different story. Because your editing program has so much more color information available when you're editing 10-bit 422 footage compared to, let's say, 8-bit 420 footage you will have much more color fidelity and a lot more flexibility. So my final verdict would be, if you're shooting very basic stuff that is not going through an extensive post-production workflow, or if you're either limited by storage space or hardware capabilities, then you're probably going to be better off with something like 8-bit 420 or maybe 422. The lack of color data is going to be most noticeable whenever you're shooting some form of a gradient. So if you're shooting a sunrise or colored lights blending into each other, you are much likely going to encounter some form of bending.
Whenever you're shooting something where color is really important, so things like heavy color grading or green screening, for example, then you're going to get a massive benefit from shooting 10-bit 422 or maybe even 444 if your camera is capable of doing that. And there you have it. Now you know what 10-bit 422 is and if it is for you. If you've learned something from this video and want to give something back, subscribing to the channel really helps me out a lot. Now go tell somebody you love them and see you in the next one.